I was just wondering, um, I noticed that this audience laughed at the right moment in saving face. So when you were talking um, in the Chinese American English, which was a little bit of Mandarin with a lot of English, and when the mom responded, you know, very, you know, just to one thing the way she did, and um, and about Connie Chung, uh, that everybody here laughed, and and people don't necessarily laugh because they don't necessarily get that, you know, and I I I wonder if you think there's going to be a time. Because I think audiences are, are important, you know, like you guys are important and the directors are important, but also I have a lot of hope in the audience and I might be really naive about this, but I think my students are very sophisticated critics. You know, they expect a lot, they know a lot, you know, and they want a lot. Mm -hmm. And and I'm, I'm wondering if you have many thoughts about that audience. Everybody who poos the Asian American audience, including the marketing people I know, they say, oh, well, we don't have to direct anything to them because they won't necessarily go and see a film the way a Latino audience or the way an African American audience might. But do you think that the time will come when that critical mass could, you know, that kind of very appreciative critical mass could really make a difference? Or is it very far off? I, you know, I, I really don't know the answer to that. That's something that I think about and people in the industry that I talk about a lot, um, trying to figure out how to get our audiences to, um, to support our films because, you know, a lot of... Um, you know, if, if you export a movie to China, a lot of people don't want to see their Asian faces speaking English. Um, and, you know, it's funny, with that scene uh, in Swimming Face, mm -hmm. the one that uh, we're at the dinner table, that was one of the scenes where, like, we hardly rehearsed. That was just me not knowing what I was doing. <laughs> and I think that maybe the reason people um, relate to it is because a lot of people speak um, like a four-year-old in Mandarin, like, like I did. No, uh, it's my <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. um, but, um, but, you know, uh, if you see your story reflected, um, I think you're going to relate to it. Um, that said, it's, it's, an, it's, it's some, that's something I want to know, <laughs> too, of, of figuring out how to get um, people to support you because, um, you know, even my family are like, oh, well, we'll just download it. <laughs> like, but, but this is supporting your daughter. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, no, we'll, we'll download it and we'll give it to your uncle and he'll, and burn, he'll, he'll burn. burn. Yeah, and he'll, don't worry about it. It's all fine. They don't, they don't seem to get it. Um, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> Questions? Do we have? Yes, right here in the front. I'm an old American, and I'm obviously not um, Asian American or any Asian. But I just wanted to say how much I appreciate these two young actresses, because it reminds me of the time in the early 60s when we were fighting for civil rights, and, and, and now the young people, they say, what civil rights? You know, and I think if you've gotten to that level, it's absolutely thrilling. And I think to be portrayed as a, a nerd and a, a genius is not a bad thing. I, I kind of like a couple of those in my family. <laughs> I agree. Thank you for your comment. I mean, we really have come a long way. I shouldn't say we in the actor perspective, but we, we have come a long yeah. way. And that's what Elaine is, is showing is we have come a long way. However, there are new kind of generalizations and stereotypes about Asian American women that they have to overcome as well. Yeah. Okay, I hope I said this right. <laughs> we'll help so, you, no worries. <laughs> so when you, when you say like, oh, you go into Hollywood, um, the, the, um, you go into Hollywood and then they say, oh, Latino audience might not act this way or African American audience. The Latino audience is African, I mean, I think it's the same issue. <coughs> so I feel like when you say that, um, <coughs> you kind of still give the power to Hollywood, to white Hollywood. So how come you don't think the Latin Africa, how come you don't think those tonight? And my other question is, there's really no way to define progress, like what you said, this is really circular. So what do you define as progress? Like what, what character would you go, okay, that's a good character, we're making way now. Like what, 
Okay, so let's start with Elaine, and then we'll do the progress part, too. Thank you. Um, the thing about the Latino and African-American audiences was what I heard that marketers say, that there is a, an African-American movie market that will go and see um, films with African-American actors or stories in them, and that there is that kind of <coughs> audience in the in, um, Latino community, but there is none in the Asian community, and they were saying, I remember they were saying, well, Tiger Woods, you know, we, we don't have to worry about the Asian audience when um, trying to market Nikes with a new golfer, but we'll just do that for African Americans, because Asian buyers will buy whatever white buyers buy, you know, the, the, the marketers were saying that. And then, <laughs> so, I, so that's what I meant by that. And then the other question was about, well, I don't know, uh, I think that, um, that more and more, um, if doors can open so more and more good scripts written by excellent writers and also directors like Alice Wu and Mira Nair, and um, if, if there are more opportunities for them to do more stuff, more different people, and also if <coughs> the democratization of the media does occur so that these sort of internet and YouTube um, I don't know what the future for that is, but when more people are able to um, to express themselves um, in in the media, I think it's that's the really good sign. There isn't any one representation that would be the one that we all say that's the way to do it, because you know, like in a way, um, Saving Face is a very Chinese film. It's got all kinds of Chinese identity things in it, but. It has a lot of other things going for it as well, you know, so um, very diverse possibilities, I think. Um, progress, when you were talking, I, the words that, um, that were flashing through my brain were um, probably opportunity. Um, I went on a Broadway audition just a few weeks ago, and it was specifically for an Asian woman, um, and it was so well written and would have been a dream role for anyone. And um, I went to the audition and I was like number 75 <laughs> on the sign-in sheet. And this was just LA casting, you know, they were, they were casting everywhere. And, you know, for me, that was just a moment of like, yes, I'm grateful for this opportunity, but I wish I had this, you know, once a week, not once every six months. Um, and that, and that varies, actually. You know, some some years I, I feel I do have a lot more opportunity, uh, and it just depends. Um, you know, I th it might have something to do with the age range I'm in now. You know, definitely when I was younger, um, and I could play a student, that those opportunities were there a lot more. Um, but in terms of of, of progress. I, I hope that, you know, I don't mind if there's um, this stereotype of a nerd or, or, or a dragon lady or, um, I mean, I mind it, but I, I don't mind as long as there's a lot of them <laughs> and, we, and we're seeing them all at once and not just, you know, one role that comes and everyone's fighting for it at once. That's what, that's what upsets me. Or a dragon lady plus a lot of other um, like a lot of diverse, different possible. Yeah, things. exactly. Not just like twelve dragon ladies in one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be exciting, though. Now. Um, I would also just say I think what I think for me the biggest frustration is if you want to talk about mainstream, right? I think the point is everyone's saying how do we get everything integrated so that everything is mainstream, whatever minority it is. But when we talk about Asian, Latin, you know. African American, and I think what it comes down to is you see these studios that are run by primarily white men that are making decisions for a population of people that are very diverse. And in their heads, they think that we will not go see movies unless it's reflected by what they put in there. So they're casting people that they think people want to go watch. Now, I don't think that we are silly enough to not go see a movie if it's going to be good, if it doesn't have a white male or a white female or whatever as the two leads. I think they need to know that. I think we need to tell them 
I think we need to show them by the way what movies we support, what movies we ask them to keep making. Because at the end of the day, if the movie's good, I really don't think you're going to care if it's a black woman, a white woman, an Asian woman, a Latin woman, because hopefully they're just good. And that's what matters. That, for me, would be the biggest progress. When you see the list that studios have every time there's a movie that's being produced, a big movie, they'll have a list of what actors they're thinking about for it. Five or five on the short list and the longer list. And there are very few minority women reflected on that. You know, they think there's like three or four bankable stars that, sure, there's like maybe five that can actually definitely bring in an opening weekend, you know, big movie stars. But there's like five. After that, really, you're not going to go see a movie unless you want to see that movie. So we need, to, we need to all really be more, I think, empowered and realize that we do have a choice and we do need to support the movies we want to see. And we need to, to basically write to them, talk to them, every opportunity we get you know, to show them that it's not about, we're not scared. Like they think we're, they're scared to put someone of color as a lead because they think you won't go see it. And I think we're smarter than that. So that to me would be the biggest progress. Which resonates to our opening film, which was one of the first featured couples that were Asian American in a love interest and we were trying to scratch our heads, Brian and Dan and I were like, when was the last time we saw a healthy relationship between an Asian American couple on screen? That's a head scratcher. You yeah, tried. I just thought saving faces. I mean and then that brings another story of getting right. straight. Like I thought saving faces was a loving couple. Absolutely. That wasn't brought up either. So it's kinda of like you know what I mean? Like there's just so many <laughs> Yeah, one in how many, right? That was two thousand four. Yeah, it's a great point. <laughs>